Hi, I'm Ian with Turatech USA, and today we're going to install the Turatech Plug and Travel ESA compatible shock onto this F800 GS. This is a 2013 F800 GS, but this shock will fit any F800 or F800 GS adventure that's 2013 or newer. It's a direct replacement of the stock ESA shock where you can plug this right into the bike's electronics and adjust the damping on the shock absorber on the fly from the button on the handlebar. Just like the stock shock, you have a remote preload adjuster, so as you add weight or remove it from the bike, you set your ride height with this knob here. This shock is a great upgrade from the OEM equipment it handles heat a lot better, it can be custom sprung for the load you're going to put on the motorcycle, and it's really built to last for all the long journeys you're going to take on this bike. To complete this installation, you will need a torque wrench, 24 millimeter and 8 millimeter sockets, T25, T30, and T55 Torx wrenches, a 4 millimeter Allen wrench, a pair of side cutters, and some thread locking agent. Okay, now that we're ready to start installing the shock, we have to remove the seat, the back wheel, and any type of fender extension that'll get in the way of pulling out the stock shock. To access the upper shock bolt, we need to remove the seat mount here in the middle of the motorcycle. To do that, I'll use a Torx T25 to pull this bolt out and the same on the other side that attach to the body panel, and then an eight millimeter socket to remove the four nuts that hold this down to the rubber isolators. Now use a pair of side cutters carefully to snip the two zip ties that hold the wire harness to the bottom side of the seat mount and also unplug the one connector and remove the BMW diagnostics plug from the seat mount. Now you can pry it up and out. And just lay the seat mount off to the side. To gain access to the lower shock bolt, it's much, much easier if you remove the one bolt that holds this plastic chain guide in place. The bolt's right here at the back on the inside. It's a little hard to see, but we can use a Torx T25 and we can just unscrew it. And then I'll use a zip tie to hold the chain guide up to the chain guard so we can easily access the lower shock bolt with tools. Now we have to disconnect the wire for the ESA shock. It's mounted down here in a bit of an awkward position, but there's a button on the top of the black side of the connector you can press and separate the two pieces. Then you have the white end. This is attached to the stock shock. Now it's disconnected, so the shock's ready to come out once we remove the bolts. Now you use the Torx T55 wrench to remove the lower shock bolt that we exposed by lifting up the chain guide. Once the bolt's loose, you can lift up on the swing arm and just reach in to pull it out. You can use the Torx T55 wrench again to loosen and remove the upper shock mount bolt. The upper shock mount on the F800 uses an additional spacer in between the frame on the right hand side. So just be aware of that while you are removing these pieces. If you grab the top of the shock, you can pull the bolt out. And here's the spacer. Shock's ready to come out of the motorcycle now. Now that the shock is unbolted and the ESA wire is disconnected, you can gently just reach through and lower the shock out of the back of the bike. The remote preload adjuster on the Turatech shock is mounted up in this position here in this open space. So in order to run the preload adjuster behind the frame, you have to remove any type of countershaft sprocket guard that you have on the bike. This is the Turatech one, so I'm gonna pull it off real quick. Now that the chain guide area is wide open, we can install the new shock. So when you pick it up, make sure you hold the ESA wire up against the spring here, just so it doesn't get caught anywhere. Feed it in from the back side, just like we took the stock shock out, and then we'll hang the preload adjuster off to the side before we insert it in between the frame and the countershaft.
Now's a good time to connect the ESA connector. You put it back together just the way the stock one came apart, and then you can either snap the ESA plug into the same mount that the stock one came from, or you can just zip tie it securely in place. Make sure it doesn't get caught in the chain or in the spring on the shock absorber. Before we slide the preload adjuster against the chain and underneath the frame member here, I recommend taping it up with some masking tape just to keep from scratching the anodizing. Now that this piece is taped up, we slide it directly over the top of the chain to get it up in front of the countershaft sprocket. Now that the shock's in place, the ESA connector is plugged in, and the preload adjuster is fished through above the chain, we can install the shock now with the shock bolts. So I do the lower shock mount for first. I use the Torx T55 wrench to tighten it, but I like to put it in place just with my hand first. To install the upper shock mount, you have to use this spacer and you see it has one side with a cutout on the bottom. That's the side that faces toward the shock absorber. So you hold that in position right here in between the shock and the frame. Get the bolt started part ways through. And then it helps if you pick the swing arm up a little bit. And then you can feed the bolt through into the shock. The upper and lower shock bolt use the same fastening torque. It's 100 newton meters, which is roughly 74 foot pounds. You use the T55 Torx wrench and tighten them both up. This part will take a little bit of experimentation and fiddling to get just right. But the idea is that you want the preload adjuster to land just here below the regulator, and the bracket will be in this position right here. The bracket is going to be mounted behind the preload adjuster and then mounted to the side of the engine case like this. And the whole time you want to make sure that that hose is back behind the engine in a place where it's not going to be contacted by the chain. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to install this bracket on the back side of the preload adjuster using some thread locker and the bolts and the lock nuts that are supplied with it. And then we'll mount the bracket to the engine case using these stock bolts. So with the bracket loosely attached, we get a better idea of where we want this piece to end up. It's going to look about like that when we're all done. Now you use your four millimeter Allen wrench to tighten the bolts that mount the preload adjuster handle onto the bracket. These bolts don't need to be very tight. You've got thread locker in there and these lock nuts, so just get them a little more than hand tight. Now it's time to remove these two engine case bolts. You use a Torx T30 wrench to remove these two engine case bolts. Again, this is where you're gonna line the preload adjuster bracket up to. Before you reinstall these engine case bolts, I would put a little bit of blue Loctite onto them. You really don't want to over torque these bolts because they're threaded directly into your engine case. Install the remaining two lock washers over the heads of the bolts. And line them up with your preload adjuster bracket. And slide it into the engine case. Now is a good time to check the routing of the preload adjuster hose and make sure to zip tie it up against anything so that it doesn't rub on hard parts or get stuck in the chain while the swing arm's moving. The preload adjuster is firmly mounted. The ESA suspension is installed. The connectors are all plugged in and all the wires and hoses are zip tied safely out of the way. 
Now's a great time to put your counter shaft sprocket back on before we put the rest of the motorcycle back together. Remember to clip the zip tie and reattach the chain slider. I personally like to put a little bit of Loctite on the bolt before I reinstall it. Be careful when you're reinstalling the seat mount to not pull too hard on the wires. You have to get it moved backward just enough and then tip down in the front. Sometimes you have to compress these little rubber isolators to get the unit to move forward. Once that's rested in place, you can put the bolts, the four nuts on top that hold it down, the two bolts to the bodywork, and then remember to reattach the wiring connector, the diagnostic plug, and zip tie the wire harnesses back up to this piece. The shock absorber's installed, the preload adjuster's installed, the electronics are connected. Now it's time just to install the wheel and the seat, and we'll be ready to ride. The Turatec plug and travel ESA compatible shock installation is now complete. The next thing to do is to go online on the Turatec blog and read our blog about setting suspension sag. You'll need a buddy and then you can use the preload adjuster to set the sag exactly right for your body weight and the load that you're gonna be carrying. And then you can hit the trails, take this thing for a ride, really enjoy the upgrade in the suspension. Thanks for watching, hope this helped.